In the news this week, we recognize that 90% uh, of companies did not pay their taxes. It was also registered that Stanchat and INM Bank are the most expensive tier one banks in Kenya. We also saw in the news that uh, Tanzania is trying to become, the, uh, going to set up the central bank for East African community. They want it. And of course, that's very contentious among the member countries. Uh, we also been seeing that for Kenya to become the most competitive country in, in the world, uh, Kenya needs to invest heavily on logistics, for example, the Lamu and the Bagamoyo uh, port. Uh, we've seen also clearly it has been defined that, that for curriculums to become most meaningful, they should be designed to help the industry uh, interest to take care of the, what the industry is looking for. And uh, also we saw something very interesting that now Deloitte has been fined because they were the auditors for Chase Bank when Chase Bank was seen to have committed so much financial fraud and they were having what you call a hidden 2.1 billion into the books. And why is this is very important is that the conduct of the CEO was very instrumental to make this happen. And that was the CEO of Chase Bank. The CEO Chase Bank was a rock star CEO. So the main topic of this week will focus on that. So the topic on this week is why is the obsession with rock star CEOs and the consequences is that they always end up rocking the companies. We have seen the cases of Tyco. Tyco was, an, uh, was a company that was an investment company. A CEO was a rock star CEO. A rock star CEO is a CEO that has what's so called celebrity status that even sometimes their board members even fear to deal and ask any question, whatever they are doing. All the other stakeholders even fear to engage them. Imagine Tyco CEO used to fly their board members in a private jet for a board meeting in a very, very exclusive environment. And the company was performing so well that the board members could not question him why he was doing that and where the money was coming from. We've seen so many rockstar CEOs that have brought companies down. Go to Enron. Jeff Skilling was one of the CEO. He even be able to make Enron make investment that made shareholders lose money. But in the beginning, the, the shareholders made so much money. Uh, Anderson was one of them. Cases are so many there, out there. In Kenya also we have Rockstar CEO Titus Nakuni uh, moving to Kenya Airways. He was a Rockstar CEO, he was respected, but what happened in the end? It rocked Kenya Airways. So uh, we see Duncan at Chase Bank. It rocked Chase Bank. So the main question here, which we need to ask ourselves, that if we look at the corporate America, in the 1950, 1960, it was seen that whenever a rockstar CEO departed, the share prices in the stock market changed by around 3%. In the year 1990 and the year 2000, they about, this figure went up to 8% change in the share prices when a rockstar CEO left. Uh, in the year 2020, this figure has gone to more than 20%. Of course, you are seeing percentages, but what does this mean to investors? One percentage change in an invest in a, in a, in a shareholder in stock market uh, of brings around one billion dollar change. So the 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 ten percent, the three percent, I'm talking about around thirty thirty billion dollar change. Eight percent, I'm talking about is around eighty billion change. And now that we had hit twenty percent, any change of that magnitude will constitute a 200 billion change in the stock market. So the question is, is it justifiable or are these Rockstar CEO deserve what they are? The truth of the matter is that it's not. In fact, it is not something that they deserve. Hardly is any CEO a Rockstar, by the way. And I'll give some examples here. Steve Jobs was a Rockstar CEO. He built Apple to what it is. Uh, he built picks at what it is. When he departed, Cook took over. People said Apple will crumble. I'm sure that is not happening. We have seen so many companies that were very big, uh, that were seen to be very important. Remember at, under, at some company like uh, Interface, which was a carpet company, the CEO departed and appointed a new CEO. All this happens. So why are we having things? It's also an obsession with the presidency. So-and-so is the best president. If he leaves, the company will, will, will collapse. 
we've seen Moi left, uh, the country never collapsed. We saw Kibaki left, the company never collapsed. We are seeing Uhuru is about to leave. The country will not collapse, let's have faith. And therefore, there is no much obsession with this thing called uh, Roxa CEO because it is a dangerous thing. It has led to the rocking of companies. So in this way, what should we focus on if you are a board member, if your CEO has what you call celebrity status and is seen as a Roxa CEO, that when they appear on the board, even the board members stand when the CEO walks in. Focus on the following. Do they have, they are they honest people? Check the honesty of these people. Check their vision. Check whether they have integrity. Check whether they have empathy. Check whether they are willing to listen. Check whether they are confident, self-confident, and they can work with the team to deliver. So a CEO should not be seen with celebrity status. A CEO character should be who can marshal a team and deliver results. If this is the case at KCB, we should not worry about Paul Russo. We should not worry about the leaving of Joshua Igara. Just like we never worried too much about the leaving of Martin Oduro Tieno. If this is the case, we should not worry about the leaving or the departure of Bob Colimo, the likes of Michael Joseph. We should be concerned about what is the vision of Peter Ndegwa? What is his integrity? What is self-confidence? What is his honesty level? What is level of empathy? Can he marshal a team to succeed? So if we focus on this, we can find ourselves dealing with the Rockstar CEO because corporate Kenya can be rocked by that. For example, James Mwangi at Equity Bank, he is a Rockstar CEO. But if you look at his integrity on his side, he was being questioned on the issue of land the other day. But of course, we have seen him that he is empathetic, he can marshal a team, he can run an organization. I don't want to say the land issue was an issue because it's still under investigation, so no one has evidence about that. But in real sense, no one really has an issue with James Mwange as uh, a CEO of, KC, uh, of Equity Bank. Anybody taking over should be judged with the same attributes. Do they have integrity, honesty, empathy? confident? Do they have a vision? Can they marshal a team? Can they make a team run the vision of Equity Bank? So we leave all those cults, rockstar, I call them cult behaviors, and focus on what matters, substance as a CEO. And the best way to deal with the CEO, just check whether they are doing the right thing. Don't worry about all those hypes because the people around the CEO create a bubble, and this bubble can actually burst. Let's focus on real attributes. Let us not focus on the noise. Let us focus on the signal, and the signal is what I've mentioned. And that will make corporate Kenya safe, and the Chase Bank issue will not come back. Imperial Bank issue will be the things of the first. Uchumi issues will be gone. Tuskies issue will be over. Nakumat issue will be forgotten, and we shall focus on running a company, not based on cult, but based on serious attributes that leads to success. Thank you.